Welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio and tonight's YouTube Live. I am so glad that you could join me. Welcome, welcome. I saw before we got started, there are people from all over the United States and probably from all over the world as they watch the replay after we're done tonight. I'm excited to share an easy card with you. In fact, it's so easy that I actually created it in multiple colors for you. So how many purple fans do I have out there tonight? I hope there's a couple of you. Bear with me while I reach over for my iPad. I wanna make sure that I can see your comments when I go ahead and flip the camera down to get started. Everyone, I want to introduce you to Megan. Megan's name is in blue on the live chat. There's a small wrench to her. Megan is my YouTube live assistant. She's here to actually catch comments that I might miss when I turn the camera down to the stamp table because I'll be busy stamping. I mean, that's what it's all about. But if you don't love purple, don't worry. I've got you covered in lots of other samples. Oh, I've got lots of fun stuff to share with you tonight. So I'm super glad that you're here. Now, I know there's a lot of you just getting on, so I wanna make sure that I mention this now, and I'll tell you again as a reminder at the end, I've got a special giveaway tonight for three random people. And you're gonna to have to stay tuned with me because I'm gonna ask you a specific question that you'll need to answer. Now, if you're here with me during the live, you can just chat in the live comments, and if you're watching the replay, you'll be able to answer in the comments below. But be sure that you share tonight's video with your other stamping friends. They'll be able to join in on the drawing as well for my giveaway. All right, so what do you say we get started? Just as a quick reminder, if this is your first time on YouTube Live with me, there is a slight delay between when I'm speaking and what you're actually hearing. And the same holds true with your comments. They come up about six to eight seconds behind what you actually have typed them. So I'm a little behind if you're typing and I'm ahead of what you're hearing. All right, so please be patient with me in case I miss it. That's what Megan's here for. All right, let's get going. I'm gonna turn the camera down to the stamp table and we'll get started. Welcome everyone. I see so many of you here. It's really exciting. It's so fun. All right, I'm gonna start with a piece of thick whisper white cardstock. I put a little X on mine because when I was preparing my packet, I wanted to make sure I didn't get this mixed up with some other pieces. And we're gonna start by doing some stamping. I'm gonna be using my Memento ink and I've pulled out the teacup and this is from an amazing bundle of products called um, the Tea Room Suite. I'm actually using the Time for Tea stamp set. You'll see there's lots of fun images on here and the spot of tea framelits. Now I've pulled some out, so there's definitely some missing. We're gonna use those together tonight. You can buy them individually, or you can purchase them as a bundle in my online store for a 10% discount. Now, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and you're interested in obtaining a complimentary copy of the current Stampin' Up! catalog, I would be more than happy to send you one. Just leave me a comment and we'll get a hold of you to get your address. So that Memento ink and this thick Whisper White cardstock, for those of you that have already watched my videos before, should be an indication to you that I'm gonna be using a very exclusive product to do some coloring. But I've got all kinds of options that I'm gonna to talk to you about tonight. So I've got my teacup here, and I've got my um, chamois right off camera, so bear with me, I'm reaching over to switch stamps. And now I've got the leaf that's from that stamp set. It's kind of a big tea leaf, so I'm gonna stamp that here at the top. And then I'm gonna switch over to a small flower. Now this small flower, um, it looks tiny, but wait till you see when we're done. This is gonna be just an awesome upsell of this entire bundle. Now I say upsell because oftentimes people will want to buy the stamps and not get the framelits, or get the framelits and not get the stamps. And you know what they always tell me? I wish I would have bought them together because now I got one or the other and I gotta go back and get the other one and I wish I could have saved 10% up front. So keep that in mind as you're selecting products in the catalog, when there are bundles available, consider getting them as a bundle. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some colors to these images. Now, the great thing about this stamp set you're gonna notice is that there are solid colors here, I'm sorry, solid images here that fill the outline stamps. But the best part about this is these outline stamps, for those of you that like to color, you can color. So you can use this two different ways, which makes it extremely versatile. So I'm gonna do a little bit of both because I wanna show you a little bit of the variables that go along with this bundle. 
Let's start with the flower. And remember I told you if I got my purple lovers, here we go. We've got the new classic ink pads. I am loving the way these stamp. I'm telling you, I see a huge difference compared to the old style. The shallower the ink pad that, that it is now really has made a difference in the coverage of my stamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink this up. And because the stamp set is photopolymer, it allows me to be able to see where I'm going. So I'm gonna manipulate this to try to get that little piece lined up here. Now my head is pretty far away because of the camera and I'm not going to re-ink and I'm going to fill in that second image to make it a little bit lighter. So we've got a little bit of interest here in our color going on. Now I'm going to switch over now and grab a different stamp. This is going to be the one to fill the tea leaf. Let me go ahead and close that up and put that off to a side and I'm going to switch over to the granny apple green. Uh-oh, I keep cutting out someone says. Uh-oh, I'm hoping that might be just your Wi-Fi connection and not YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up the leaves, but I don't want them too, too dark. So I'm going to stamp off of my grid paper off here to the side just to lighten that shade. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and I'm going to fill that image. And again, just lining it up the best that I can. And there we go. We've got that completed. So again, if you don't want to color these flowers in, you don't have to or the leaves. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some coloring. I'm going to add some color to this using the Stampin' Blends. Now the Stampin' Blends are an alcohol-based marker that Stampin' Up! has actually come out with. They're relatively new within the last six, seven months, but I'm going to tell you what, they are fantastic and they're super easy to use. The one reason I like the stamp set is because it appeals to both those who like to color and those don't. Now keep in mind, just because I'm using the Stampin' Blends doesn't mean you have to. You can use watercolor pencils, colored pencils. You can use a watercolor medium with an aqua painter or a blender pen. There's lots of ways you can color this. And I'm gonna give you some other ideas here as this card gets finished with some other samples that I have to share with you. I'm gonna start by coloring the teacup and I'm gonna keep this pretty simple. The Stampin' Blends come in a light and a dark shade for shading purposes. So I'm gonna start with the lightest one first and they are dual ended. You're gonna see there's a thick white line here at one end and a thin line here at the other. That's an indication of the size of the tip of the Stampin' Blends. When I have a large area to cover, I like to use the wide tip and the more narrow nub or the fine tip of this for smaller areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the large one on this. I'm gonna go ahead and brush in a little bit of color. I'm gonna be a little brave and I'm gonna come in with that light right around the rim of this cup. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna color this area here. Do you see how I'm kind of pulling the color? I'm gonna make the whole thing this beautiful Highland Heather purple. Isn't this pretty? I know, I saw some of you tell me, oh, I love purple. Well, this is gonna be your night because you're gonna love this card. But like I said in the beginning, in case you missed it and you're just joining us, I've got other colored samples to share with you. Do you see how I'm turning the paper? Oftentimes when we're coloring, we just try to keep going in the same direction and it really is challenging for our hand, isn't it? So I like to turn the paper to make it easier for me. Do you see the teacup handle here? I know that's gonna to be too big. So I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna use the chiseled end or that real nub end to get inside of there. That's gonna make it really simple for me. I'm gonna switch over now to the darker shade. Now keep in mind the great thing about the Stampin' Blends is you don't have to blend if you don't want to. But I wanna show you something. Do you see how nice and smooth this coloring is? There's no streaked lines like you would get with a regular marker. I'm gonna do some blending though, just to give you an idea of how this works. So I'm gonna come up a little bit inside of here and add a little bit of a darker shade. I'm gonna add a little darker here, a little darker here. I'm gonna come in around my cup and I'm gonna add some definitions. Those lines in the stamped image, boy, that's the artist's way of telling you that's where there's gonna be some shading. So we like to cheat and use those because I don't know about you, I'm not a professional colorer that by any sense of the means, but I do like to color, it's pretty therapeutic. And I'm gonna come inside these little detail lines here and I'm gonna add some color there as well. Now the secret to the Stampin' Blends with these alcohol markers is to go back and blend them so that these hard lines actually look like shading and not like they're placed there. So I'm gonna go back with the lighter shade one more time and I'm gonna go back over this and you're gonna see how I'm pulling that darker shade out and pulling it across the paper. So I'm starting at the outside where it's at and I'm pulling it in. And I'm gonna come in here just a little bit and do the same thing on this line. Now keep in mind, that's pretty small. 
I'm going to turn this as well and I'm going to do the same thing on this edge. I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to pull that color down here as well. So you've got to go back over it with the lightest shade again to get that dimension. So I'm going to add a little bit more color here and I'm going to leave a little bit of lighter areas. Do you see the highlights that are inside of here? It's really pretty, isn't it? Let's go ahead and let's fill this teacup with some tea. I'm going to use the light crumb cake Stampin' Blends. One more thing I think I probably should tell you is you can buy these individually for $4.50 or you can buy them in a combo pack for $9. No, there's no discounted price, but it allows you flexibility on your spending, which is what I love. I'm going to use, again, the brush tip. This is the light crumb cake, and we're going to add some tea to this card, okay? So we're going to use that color here, but let's add some shading. And did you see how I put most of my dark on this side? So that's where I'm going to put the dark on the inside of the cup as well, just to lend some credence. So here we go. Pull that out. And remember that secret now to adding that blending is to go back over it with that light shade. The Stampin' Blends are a square-shaped barrel, which means you don't have to worry about them sliding off your stamp table. The caps do snap on. If Lisa wasn't having a hard time staying in the camera view, <laughs> there we go. And I really love that they have little small bumps on the caps, which makes them easy to pull off. They are snapping on and snapping off, which means you don't have to worry about the alcohol evaporating from here and then losing your colors. The great thing about this price point is that when they're dried out, you just ditch it and buy another one for this price. I'm telling you, that's the great thing. So the nibs on these, the points are not replaceable like they are with other alcohol-based markers, but extremely affordable and great for people who are new to stamping or who want to experiment with alcohol markers. I'm going to take now my um, color lifter. This should really be called the color mover. And those of you that have watched my videos before will know a little bit about this. If you color a little bit outside the lines, kind of like I have here, I'm going to try to move you in a little closer so that you can see. Do you see how I kind of got a little outside the lines there because I used that thick end? I'm going to turn this to make it easy for my hand and I'm going to use the fine tip side. I'm going to lay this what I call like an invisible kind of marker outside of here. And what's going to happen is the alcohol is going to start to penetrate towards the inside or move. And as it begins to evaporate, that little mistake, those little lines are going to start to dissipate or they're going to look lighter. So you can not only correct your mistakes with this, you're actually going to be able to create variations in tone. So you can make some areas lighter by going over them with the color lifter as well. So you can see as that processes, that wet spot is actually going to evaporate as the alcohol goes away. So I'm going to set those off to the side. And now we're going to use those framelits because that's the best part about a bundle is being able to use the dyes that are involved. I'm going to move the camera back out so that we can get the uh, full view of the Big Shot and the dies. So let me bring my Big Shot die cutting machine in. Here we go. And I've got my magnetic platform. Is this required? Absolutely not. This is just my platform of preference when I'm using framelits because framelits are metal and I find that they hold in place better for me. And I've got my clear cutting mats here. I've got one for the bottom to protect it. And then I've got my stamped images. Now here is the beauty of these framelits. Not only do we have pieces to cover them, we have duplicates. So look at this. There's two for the flowers. There are also two for the vines, which means if you stamp more than one flower, this is going to make your life so much easier. All you have to do is just stamp them at the same time and we're going to line them up. Now I'm going to ask for your patience while I go ahead and maneuver this to find that little notch where I know that it's going to go. If you find that yours are slipping on your platform, it has a lot to do with the magnetic form underneath or with the bowing of your clear plates. It's really, really important. Do you guys see that? You see how it's slipping? So here's my best remedy. We're going to use a small post-it note. Some people use a washi tape. There is no wrong way. You're going to use what's comfortable for you. So I'm just going to kind of line that up the best that I can. I'm going to use that sticky end to hold it in place because you know what? You're all watching me live and I want to make sure that I get this right. <laughs> it's not like we're in a video and I could just fix it, right? Trust me, I make mistakes just like you do at home. I'm no different. A lot of times, sometimes I'll create a card numerous times to get it just the way I want it to look. 
But when you know what? This is the great part of being um, a paper crafter is that we're able to just create more and more. And then you know what? I don't throw them away. I reuse them. I take what looks good and I put them on another card. So I consider mistakes an opportunity to be creative. I think that one's gonna stay right where I put it. All right, great thing about all the framelits, we can die cut once. We've lined it all up, we're gonna cover it up, and we are ready to go. So I'm gonna crank that through. And I've got here those pieces. Let's see how we did. And I'm just gonna pop those to the back. Look, don't you love how it die cut that little opening in the teacup? That's perfect, isn't it? And then I'm gonna remove those little framelits as well. All right, well, that one isn't perfect, but you're gonna forgive me, right? And then we've got another one here. Here's our other flower. And then we've got our tea leaves. So gotta love that you can use the Big Shot once and get those all taken care of at one time. Let me bring back my grid paper here. And I've got our images, and let's start getting this card put together. So I'm gonna put those off to the side here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm gonna have pictures of this completed card along with a couple samples over on my blog on Saturday morning. There you'll find the cutting dimensions as well. We'll put a link down in the description bar below. I'm gonna go back to that Memento ink and from that exact same stamp set, I've pulled out a greeting. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up in that Memento ink. Ink that up really good. I wanna make sure that I don't miss an area. I like to check to make sure I don't have it around my outside edges. And I'm gonna put that way over here to the far right side of my car base. And I'm gonna leave, oh, maybe about an inch or so from the top, and then I'm gonna stamp. Okay, so now we've got our greeting there. Put that stamp right off camera. And now let's assemble the card. I'm gonna work with a little bit of designer series paper. This is from the Suttles Designer Series Paper Stack. And like most of the Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers, they are double-sided, so it gives you lots of choices. This is a six by six stack of paper. There's 48 sheets in it, and you cannot beat the price. I'm gonna tell you what. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it to create a banner. I'm gonna use the triple banner punch. Now, a couple things about this punch before I show you how it works. It will actually create a banner tip on three different sizes, a one inch, a one and a half, and a two inch. This is one and three quarters. So you're probably thinking, oh, how's that gonna work? Well, I wanna show you. Go ahead and slide it in the track. And obviously it's not gonna be even along those grooves because it's not designed for this size. So all I do is I turn my punch upside down and I look just visually to see if there's equal amount of space on this end and this end, and then I use it. Because you know what, if there's a punch to do the duty for me, I absolutely put it to work, that's for sure. So I'm gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna add a little bit of snail adhesive to the back. I see Megan is really busy answering questions because I'm busy stamping. Thank you, Megan. And I'm going to add this to the left side of my card base. I'm gonna leave a little bit of area here on a margin of white right along the side. Now, some of you may be asking, what is that thing? Well, I'm gonna use it again. This is a silicone craft sheet. This product is the bomb and it's a beloved tool here in my stamp room. Adhesive will not stick to it. Because of the silicone surface, it will literally rub right off. And the great thing about it is if you're working with small itty bitty pieces like these, you know putting adhesive on the back of these is also difficult at times and we end up with adhesive on our work surface and I don't know about you but I'm fighting that sticky spot the whole time I'm crafting so this takes the place of any mistakes any adhesive on the work surface so I love love to use it so I'm going to go ahead and assemble this now and I'm going to put the little tea leaves behind my teacup and this is where my silicone craft sheet comes in really great watch this I only want adhesive at the bottom now, if I were to do that on that paper, guaranteed it's gonna be sticky. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up and I'm gonna stick this right behind my teacup here. So you see how we've got that? Next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna add these small pieces. I had just cut all my fingernails off. I'm having a hard time picking this up. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this is bugging me. So how many of you have done this? Come on, fess up. If you've ever die cut and it slipped on you and you've kinda of gotta go back and get a haircut, so this is a good lesson. Take your time, don't make the same mistake Lisa made. All right, that'll make my card look a little bit better. 
I'm gonna flip those over and on the back side, I'm gonna place a dimensional on each of those. So I'm gonna put one here and I'm gonna place one here. I'm gonna remove that paper backing. And then we're gonna stagger these flowers on top of this image. I'm gonna put the darker one here at the bottom. Actually, you know what, I changed my mind. I think I'm gonna put just the lighter one here at the bottom. And I'm gonna save this one. I'm gonna change my mind altogether. Isn't that the best part of creating? We're gonna add that here. But I wanna take one more step with this card. Just before you joined me, I actually cut myself a couple pieces of Granny Apple Green cardstock. The beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. You just cannot go wrong. And I've got another color coordinated product that's gonna work on this as well. I wanna create some visual interest behind these corners. So I'm gonna go back now over to my silicone craft sheet. And I know I'm just gonna move that over. Isn't that the great thing? It won't stick. I'm gonna add a little adhesive here so I can do one of those corners. So I'm gonna flip that over. I'm gonna put adhesive on the back side. I'm gonna lay my square here, and then I'm just gonna visually look just to give myself a little tiny border of color there. And I'm gonna do another one down here in the opposite corner. So I'm gonna flip over as well, still on my silicone craft sheet, and I'm gonna pick up this other piece, and I'm gonna slide that over here. And I'm looking to make them, oh, about the same depth, because it would look kind of funny if one was a little deeper than the other. I'm just doing the best that I can. So there we go, we've got our two corners, they have a little bit of color, that's lots of fun. That's just a nice, easy way to add a little pizzazz without adding a whole layer to your card. Now, before I go ahead and add those other elements, here comes that other piece of coordinated product we talked about. Isn't this ribbon beautiful? This is the Granny Apple Green Ribbon. It has a beautiful white border on it. And we're gonna add this to create a definition here at the top. Now, you're probably wondering why is it small? Well, I'm gonna talk to you about that in a second, but let's go ahead and mount it with some glue dots. So I'm pulling back one of the glue dots to reveal it here. It's kind of shiny and small. It might be difficult for you to see. And rather than pick them off with my finger, I press my item on top of the dot and then pull. So I'm gonna put one on each of those raw ends. And then I am gonna tack this down right across the top of my designer series paper. And you know what? I'm gonna use my silicone craft sheet again so that in case that glue dot ends up on my work surface, it's not gonna to stick to it. So let me lift that up. I've got one going here, and I've got one going around the back side. And I've got another piece to make the tie. Now you're probably thinking, well, how come you didn't go all the way around? Well, because you know what? That's gonna save you at least four to five inches every single card that you make. And you know, the holidays are coming and you may be making your holiday cards. And if you like ribbon as much as I do, you're gonna find that that's not only a big time saver, it's also a big cost saver for you. So I'm gonna show you how this piece works in just a second. Let's go ahead and add the teacup. I'm gonna flip that over. I'm gonna pull off a few more dimensionals here and add them to the back of my card. I tend to be generous with these because if I'm gonna mail them, I'm very cognizant of the fact that they're gonna be going through a mail meter. That little postage machine at the post office has rollers on it, and I don't want my card coming out sagging on the other end. Well, there's nothing more embarrassing than a card that doesn't look like when you made it, right? And remember this one that we got already? Let's go ahead and put that darker one right upside here in between those little tea leaves. I'm gonna save this piece for a second, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this all ready to mount on the base of the card. So coordinating cardstock again, this is the Highland Heather, and I'm a big fan of my bone folder to create that nice crisp edge on my card. And then here we go, we're gonna add some adhesive. Generously here around the corners, we wanna make sure those are gonna stick. And I'm also gonna give you a cheater trick. This is a trick that I use quite often. I'm giving away my secrets tonight, but that's the best part about paper crafting is I can teach you what I've learned. How many times I've adhered to card and no matter how much adhesive I put near the ribbon where it's thicker, it tends to lift over time. So go with your glue dots and add another one to the back side of where that ribbon is on both ends. That's gonna tack it in place and you're gonna be assured that it's gonna come out looking just like you made it before you put it in the mail. So I'm looking to keep just a narrow border here I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna rub from the back because sure enough, I always have ink on my hands and I end up transferring it to the front of my card. Remember this piece? Well, this is gonna come up underneath 
and then we're going to create a single knot and here's the best part about this ready we can slide this and we can put it wherever we want that's the great thing now so for those of you that are probably thinking well that's gonna slide when you take it in and out of the envelope all right so I've got another tip for you and it's another glue dot I'm gonna pick one up with my paper piercing tool to help me because these are really sticky and they will stick to your fingers I'm gonna stick it right behind that knot and I'm gonna tack that right in place and then what I'm gonna do is come in with my scissors and I'm gonna give this a little bit of a haircut to finish off those ends and we've got a super easy teacup card but you know what if you've watched my videos before you know I'm not done because I love bling so I'm gonna add a couple pearls to my card just because I can the pearls come with glue dots already on the back and because they're rather small I like to use my paper piercing tool to help me pick them up so I've got one here and I've got another here, and I'm gonna place one more in the center of this little dot here on the teacup. That was just screaming a pearl as far as I was concerned. So there we go. Now we have got a completed card. What do you think? Now, if you're not a purple fan, I've got some other colors for you. I'm sure you wanna see them. So let me slide over and pull those out. Here's one in Rich Razzleberry. Exact same card, just different colors. Again, with Stampin' Blends. So I've got those. Here's another with Stampin' Blends. This is Poppy Parade. Aren't these pretty? And one more with a different color, and this is the Mango Melody. Isn't it cute? And a really simple card. The reason I like simple is A, simple always wins, and it's the colors that always make the card work, especially if you're gonna be making a bunch of cards at one time. Which is your favorite color? I really wanna know. Now, if you're joining me just now, I wanna make sure that you know that I'm gonna be doing a special opportunity for you as a giveaway tonight. You're gonna to have to watch to the end because I've got a question for you. And with that question, you'll have to provide an answer below. I'll give you more details in just a couple minutes. This card is also in the Highland Heather, but I wanna show you something. Do you see the difference? Stampin' Blends, markers. Do you see the lines? From the marker here it's real evident isn't for where the lines are going this is one reason I like the Stampin blends it makes me look really professional and fancy but they're not for everyone so this is definitely another way that you can color so do you like the marker effect or do you like the Stampin blends couple more samples with more inspiration for you I shared these here on YouTube on Monday exact same stamp set the same words come from there as well this is markered just like this one but do you know what i did with this one in case you didn't see the video i actually stamped that teacup on colored cardstock and the only thing i colored was the tea area so this is great if you're just starting to accumulate stamping products and you don't have all the markers or the stamp and blends another great way to provide color to your cards if you don't have it all so that's just another way to create the card there's a link for this card that Megan's going to put up. Um, we're going to share that as soon as we're done with the live so that if you didn't see it, you can go back and check that one out. But I've also got other cards to share with you as well. So let me slide these over and make a little bit of room here. Now, the cards I'm going to share with you now are all part of this month's Stamps in the Mail free card kit. Just so that you know, every month I give away a free card kit to make eight cards. So you will make two of each of the four designs that you'll see here. Let me take this one and I need both of my hands because check it out. It's a pop-up card. Is that not darling? Yes, you're gonna get all the free pre-cut supplies to make your cards. So these are gonna be two, 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 and this is the last one to make a total of eight cards. Now let me tell you a little bit about how Stamps in the Mail works. I figured it's probably easier to look at me than watch um, talking hands. Stamps in the way mail is a way for you to stamp with me from home. I provide all the free pre-cut supplies, a video, and a PDF tutorial. You place a $50 product order in my online store using an exclusive Stamps in the Mail host code. That's the only way that I know that you're entitled to the free pre-cut supplies. The great thing about this is you can buy whatever you'd like. If you absolutely have fallen in love with this Time for Tea bundle, 
or you like something else. Choose whatever you'd like. If you want to use the ink pads that I've used, you can. If you want to use what you have at home, you can. You'll find a complete list of the supplies that I use to make these cards if you want to make them identical over on my blog. We'll go ahead and put a link there to the Stamps in the Mail page. It's under the Online Classes tab. There's only a four-day ordering window and it ends on Saturday. So make sure that you read the instructions. It's really simple. It's an online order just using that special host code and then I'll automatically know that you're going to get the video, the tutorial, and of course the pre-cut supplies to make these eight cards. It's featuring a different stamp set every single month. So this is not a club and there's absolutely no monthly commitment whatsoever. But all my Stamps in the Mail customers also receive an added bonus, and that's Live with Lisa. They receive an invitation to a private Facebook Live event in a closed group where I provide numerous live demonstrations, a whole bundle of eight tutorials for projects. In addition to that, I put everyone's name who's earned it into a product prize patrol drawing where I give away free product. It's just tons of fun. Now I see some of you who have already enjoyed my stamps in the mail or are talking a lot about it. Thank you so much. And I really enjoyed cutting the supplies for you here in the studio and sending them to you and knowing that you're using them. It's a lot of fun. And again, there's no commitment. You're able to choose the products that you like. All right, now I told you that I had a special giveaway for you tonight. So it's real important too that you don't just share this, just you know, keep it all to yourself. Share it with some friends as well. If you have stamping friends, tell them about it. This is how it's gonna work. I'm gonna choose three random winners. One on, will be chosen on Friday, one will be chosen on Saturday, and one on Sunday. Each of those winners will be able to choose any selection from my PDF library of their choice. Now I counted right before we went live, there are over 55 different PDF tutorials and there are our snapshots of what they look like so you can make a conscious decision on the vast majority of them. The other thing is ready, but you gotta leave an answer to my question in the live chat or in the comments below. So if you're not here live and you're watching the replay, that is no problem. Go ahead and leave the answer. So you're ready? Here's the question. The question is, do you like hot or cold tea? And what is your favorite flavor? If you'll go ahead and leave those comments here, we'll go ahead and enter you in the drawing. Megan and I are gonna police that together and we'll make sure that we get three random winners, one by Friday, one by Saturday and one on Sunday. This will give those that are not able to watch it live an opportunity to enter. Please like tonight's video if you have enjoyed it. Share it with your friends so they have a chance to enter as well. And if you would, leave me a comment. We love to interact with you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I sure wanna make sure that you follow me. It's lots of fun to interact with you and I reply on every single comment. Yes, I do. You might think that's crazy, but I love interacting with you. It's because of your business that I'm in business and I get to do what I absolutely love to do. And finally, make sure you head over to my blog where you can sign up for my monthly free e-newsletter. And there I provide a tutorial that's not given on another platform that's exclusively for you. I am so glad that you guys have joined me tonight. I'm glancing over to my list to make sure I haven't missed anything. And I think I covered it all. Thanks, Megan, for moderating those comments while I stamped. And I'm so glad that you guys joined me tonight. I will be back live with you right here on YouTube. Are you ready? Monday, August 20th. And I hope that you will plan to join me. Have a great night and a wonderful weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.